Hey, so I wanted to share one of my approaches for turning sustained sounds into transient impacts. Um, this one is sort of like my brute force method, which consists of chaining lots of transient shapers into clippers into more dynamics processing afterwards to sort of uh, force the transient into existence from nothing. Uh, for this example, we're going to be listening to this little wubby synth sound. I think it's like a modular synth recording that I have. Pretty cool throbbing pulse bass, um, but it doesn't really have much of an impact to it. So I'm going to start by just creating, I just made a little fade out on it. Uh, it sounds like this to give it an overall envelope shape that I'm looking for. Fades out smoothly, um, but doesn't really punch. And the first bit of processing I'm going to apply here also doesn't add punch, but it'll make it sound a little bit sweeter. Um, because it's a mono synth source, I like to just add a little bit of modulation to widen it up a bit. Uh, that just sounds more interesting to me. You could also use like chorus or doublers or other processors in that vein, but for this example, I like the sound of the ensemble. Um, and then from there, I'm just going to put Pro L and turn it way up, crank to like plus 19, and then I also want it set to punchy because that's the overall theme here, making punch. That was a hot signal. Um, I have a safety limiter going on the mix bus here just so it doesn't clip OBS when I'm recording, but that is very loud. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, from there, go on to make it even louder. Uh, by putting SPL Transient Designer, and each Transient Designer will do. Um, but I'm turning it up way up to like plus 15 on the attack and minus 6 on the sustain. You can hear that it's already creating some good punch, but not nearly enough for my taste, so I'm going to put yet another one on. Uh, plus 10 and minus 3 or so. We're getting there. Um, I want more punch. I'm going to put another Neutron Transient Designer in wideband mode. Um, it doesn't really matter which Transient Designers you use. I just think each one has their own little flavor, and this is the combination that I like. That sounds pretty good to me. Sometimes it'll pick up like a second Transient there, but it didn't. Um, and then with all these, this new added gain, um, it's just going to go into the limiter and it's going to duck it. Uh, but instead... Before that, I want to clip it to create some upper harmonics where the actual transient hits at first. So let's hear that. Yeah, into Saturn, it's a world of difference. And here it is with. Very flubby, maybe almost too much, but I kind of like it and we're gonna roll with it. Um, and then I'm going to put another Neutron Transient Shaper. This time I want to treat the lows and the rest of the signal slightly differently. I can turn up the attack on the lows and keep it to a sharp setting, and then maybe turn down the sustain just a tad as well. Um, and then turn the attack up not quite as much on the upper band with a more smooth response. Yeah, and let's see how that sounds. Yeah, I quite like that. Let's listen to the bass isolated. That's nice. Um, I also want it like loose overall. And these loose, sharp, smooth, it's just, I think it's just altering the overall response in the detector for where the transients are happening. Um, I'm going to clip it one more time because we just added quite a bit of gain there. I'm going to keep it on the clean tube setting, which is kind of subtle, but since we're putting so much gain into it, you'll hear it distort some more. in, I think, kind of a pleasing way. Uh, that's sounding pretty good. I'm just going to do some cleanup and mastering steps here. I'm going to put like a gentle 60 dB per octave at like 60 hertz, little pro key band right there, and then do some more dynamic ducking right at that 60 hertz frequency because it gets pretty serious and I don't want it to overblow too much. That's a little bit cleaner to me. Um, and then I'm going to put unveil on top of that just for the default preset to do some overall um, you know, that bring it close sound, and also it brightens up the tail a little bit, too. Here's a little A-B. I like how it brings out the details and the decay in a subtle way. Um, and then I'm just going to put a safety limiter right after that, because I'm pretty happy with the way this is sounding. 
I'm going to leave it at minus one. True peak oversampling is sure. Let's do a little bit. And then I'm going to add some look ahead because we got quite a bit of gain and I don't want to risk it sneaking through. I'm also going to change it to the aggressive mode just because I like the way that that character sounds. Let's hear it. Compared to the regular modern one. Or even transparent. It's subtle for sure, but I also just like the word aggressive, and I'm trying to be aggressive here, so I'm going to stick with that. Um, and that that's the overall gist of it. That's the that's the chain. Uh, I'll sometimes swap these out or use, like, different saturators or different saturation modes or disable a couple of them, maybe. To get slightly different shapes, but that is the overall theme, and that's all I got. Thanks for listening, and let me know if you think of any improvements to be made here.